vor.
comedy of Pyramus and Thisbe that will never please. First Pyramus must draw a sword to kill himself, and, had, and the ladies cannot abide. How do you answer that? I heard Larkin, Carlos, fear. I believe we must leave the killing out when all is done. Not a whit. I have a device to make all well. Write me a prologue, and let that prologue seem to say <coughs> that we will do no harm with our swords, and Pyramus is not killed indeed. And tell them that I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus, but bottom the weaver. This will put them out of fear. Will not the ladies be afeard of the lion? I fear the crown too. You, masters, you ought to consider yourself with the lion among the ladies is a most dreadful thing. Well then, I believe we, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe we must write another prologue that tell us that you, Bottom, are not really a lion. Nay, you must name his name, and half his neck must be seen, and half his face must be seen through the lion's neck. And if you come here, if if you come hither as a man, I am a man as other men are, and uh, line. Yeah, yeah, what's the end of that line? And there indeed. Oh, oh. Um, and, oh, and, and there indeed, you must name his name and tell him plainly that he is snug the joiner. But there's two problems. But there's two hard things. For we must bring moonlight into the chamber, for you know, Pyramus and Thisbe must meet by moonlight. Doth the moon shine on the night that we play our play? A calendar! A calendar! Look in the almanac! Find out moonshine! Find out moonshine! Yes, it does shine that night. Well, why, then a casement of the great chamber window, and, and the moon will shine in at the casement. Then, there is another thing. We must bring... A wall into the great chamber, for Pyramus and Thisbe must speak through the chink of a wall. Ah, uh, yes. But you can never bring in a wall. What say you, Bottom? Ah, uh, yes. Some man or another must present wall. And let him have some plaster or some loam or some rough cast about him to signify wall. And, oh, and let him hold his fingers thus. And, and through these fingers shall Pyramus and Thisbe whisper. If that may be, then all is well. Come, sit down, and rehearse your parts. Pyramus, you begin, when you have spoken your speech, and everyone so, according to his view.
He followed you upon this wood, for lo, I followed him. But he has chid me hence and threatened me, to strike me, spurn me, nay, to kill me too. Let me quiet go. Oh, dad. <laughs> it's like, it's like in my brain, but it's like, it's not. To Athens. To Athens, let me quiet go. Uh, dog. Yeah, that sucks. To Athens will I bear. My fully back, and then like, I, like that, that whole okay. part. <laughs> and follow you no further. Let me go. You see how simple and how fond I am. Right. <laughs> no, it's, it's yours. Just go. Just. Why? Get you gone. Who is it that hinders you? A foolish heart I leave here behind. What? With Lysander? With Demetrius. Oh. Be not afraid. She shall not harm thee, Helena. <laughs> no, sir. She shall not. Though you take your part. <laughs> It's like, oh, she may be small, but she was a... <laughs> oh, when she's angry. Oh, when she's angry. <laughs> she is... It's, oh, she was a vixen when she went to school. Oh, she may, although she may be small, she is... She be but fierce. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I guess. I think about low and middle. Why would you suffer her to flop me thus? Let me come to her. <laughs> oh. Get you gone, you dwarf, you minimus of hindering not grass made, you bee, you acorn. You are too officious in her behalf that scorns your services. Take not her part, speak not of Helena. Uh, wait, take not her part, for if thou dost intend, never so little show of love to her, thou shalt abide it. Now she holds me not. Now follow if thou darest to try who's right of thine and mine is most in hell enough. Follow! Nay, I'll go with thee, cheek by jowl. You, mistress, all this quarrel is long of you. I will not. I will not trust you, I. No. Oh. No. <laughs> no longer will I bear my foot like that. Um, my legs are further to run afraid, but my legs are longer though to run away. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I am amazed that they're not what you said. I know, I know, it's just, I got, I got, I got caught up. I got caught up. This is thy neighbor, still thou is mistaken. Or else committest thy neighbors willfully. Believe me, King of Shadows, I mistook. Do you not tell me I should know the man by the Athenian garment be had on? And so far, blameless proves my enterprise that I have anointed in Athenian's eyes. And so far, am I glad it so did sort, as they're jangling I esteem sport. I therefore, Robin, overcast the night, then crush this earth into Lysander's eye, whose liquor hath this virtual proper tie. Prevents <laughs> all wrong his might. And make his eyes roll with wanted sight. When they next wake, all this derision shall seem a dream and fruitless vision. And back to Athens shall the lovers wend. With leaked to date till death shall never end. I'll to my queen. Oh, wait. While I in this affair do thee employ, I'll to my queen and beg her Indian boy. I'll, I'll release her charmed eye from monster's vision, and all shall be fine. My fair lord, we must, we, we must do this with haze. As night swift dragons cut the clouds full fast, and yonder shines Aurora's harbinger. I awake to the morning's love with office sport, but make no delay. Or, but in this affair, haste, make no delay. With business from nowhere, all every day. Like, that was long. Awesome. It was. Um, yeah. <laughs> Wait, so, okay. Feedback from the audience. Oh, <laughs> uh, So. <laughs>
built it. I see these things with parted eyes when I these things see double. So methinks, and I found Demetrius like a jewel, mine own and not mine own. Are you sure that we are awake? It seems that yet we sleep, we dream. Do you not you think the Duke was here? Yeah, and my father. And the father. And he did bid us fall to the temple. Why then, we are awake. Let's follow him, and by the way, let's recount our dreams. When my cue comes, call me and I shall answer. My next is Most Fair Pyramus. Hi ho, Peter Quince. Flute the Bellsmender, Snout the Tinker. Startling, gods my life stolen hence and left me asleep. I've had a most rare vision. I've had a dream, past the wit of man to say what dream it was. Man is but an ass if he is to go about to expound this dream. Methought I was, cannot say what. Methought I was, and methought I had. Man is but a patched fool who would offer to say what methought I had. The eye of man hath not heard, the ear of man hath not seen. Man's tongue, er, man's hand is not able to taste nor his tongue to conceive, nor his heart to report what my dream was. If only I could deliver that speech with this donkey head on. Oh, wait, yeah. 
marvelous, convenient place for a rehearsal. The plot will be our stage, and we'll do it in action as we will before the Duke. Peter Quince? What say a sound, Bully Bob? There are things in this comedy of Pyramus and Thisbe that will never please. First, Pyramus must draw a sword to kill himself. How can we, and the ladies cannot abide. How you answer that? I are like it, a part of fear. I believe we must leave the killing out when all is done. Not a wit. I have advice to make all well. Write me a prologue, a prologue that will seem to say that we will do no harm with our swords, and Pyramus is not killed indeed. And that I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus, but Bottom the Weaver. This will put them out of fear. Will not the ladies be afeard of the lion? I fear it, I promise you. Masters, you ought to consider yourself with yourselves. A lion among ladies is a most dreadful thing, for there is no more fearful wild fowl than your lion living. All right. Um, therefore, another prologue must tell that he is not a lion. Nay, there you must name his name, and half his face must be seen through the lion's neck. If you think I come hither as a man, I am a man as some men, as some other men are. And, and indeed, you shall name his name, and tell him plainly that he is snug the joiner. But they are too hard. A calendar, a calendar. Look at the almanac. Find out moonshine. Find out moonshine. Yes, it does shine that night. A, why, then a casement of the great chamber window. Shall the moon shine in at the chain, at the casement? Well, then there is another thing. We must bring a wall into the great chamber, for Pyrrhus and Thisbe must speak through the chink of a wall. But you can never bring in a wall. What say you, Bottom? Some men or another must present wall, and, ha and let them have some plaster or some loam or some rough cast about them. And. Oh yeah, to signify a wall, and let them hold it, their fingers thus. So Pyramus and Thisbe, and through this cranny <coughs> shall Pyramus and Thisbe whisper. If that may be, then all is well. Come, sit down and rehearse your parts. Pyramus, you begin, when you have spoken your speech, and everyone so, according to his cue. Okay. Some of those ends of lines screw me up. Okay. Well, good. So do you right. just want to stop after lights? Like, is it most fearful uh, with the wild fowl in? Yeah, I okay. I kind of do. Okay, then I'll just I'll just speak after that. That's fine. Hey, Miss Bosby. Hey, Bosby. Hey, Hey, Matt, can I borrow this? See how simple and fond I am. Why, get you gone. Uh, who is it? <laughs> who is it that hinders you? A foolish heart I leave here behind. What, with Lysander? With Demetrius. Be not afraid, she shall not harm thee, Helena. No, sir, she shall not, though you take her part. Oh, when she, oh, <laughs> oh when, when she's angry, she is keen and shrewd. She was a vixen when she went to school. Though she may be small, she be but fierce. Little again, nothing but low and little. Why will you suffer her to plot me thus? Let me come for her. 
Get you gone, you dwarf. You hindering of knockgrass maid. You bead. You acorn. You are too officious in her behalf that scorns your services. Let her alone. Speak not of Helena. Take not her part. For if thou dost intend, never so little show of love to her, thou shalt abide it. Now she holds me not. Now follow if thou darest to try who's right. Of mine or thine is most in Helena. Follow? <laughs> hey! I'll go with thee, cheek by jowl. You mistress, all this quarrel is long of you. I will I will not I, I will I will not trust you, I. But no longer no longer stay in your cursed company. Your hands are quicker than mine for a fray. My legs are longer though to run away. I am amazed and don't know what to say. This is thy negligence, still thou is mistakest, or else committest thy neighbors willingly. Believe me, King of Shadows, I am mistook. Did you not tell me I should know the man by the Athenian garment be had on? And so far, blameless proves my enterprise that I have anointed in Athenian's eyes. And so far, I am glad and so did sort, as their jangling eyes deem a sport. I therefore, Robin, overcast the night, then crush this herb into Lysander's eye, whose liquor hath this virtual proper chai. To dance all air with his might and make its eyes roll with wanted sight. When then next week all this Dorajan shall seem a dream in fruitless vision. And back to Athens shall the lovers wend, whose leagues, with leagues whose day till death shall never end. While whilst I in this affair do thee employ, fall to my queen and beg her Indian boy, and I will her charms I release from monsters view, and all things shall be peace. My fairy lord, this must be done with haste, as the night swift dragons cut the clouds full fast, and yonder shines Aurora's harbinger. I with the morning's love have often made sport. I with the morning's love have oft made sport, but notwithstanding haste make no delay, we may affect this business yet every day. Demetrius, like a jewel, mine own and not mine own. Are you sure that we are awake? Yet we sleep, we dream. Would you not think the Duke was here? Yeah, and my father. And to follow them. And he did follow, and he did bid follow us to the temples. Why then, we are awake. Let's follow him. And by the way, let's recount our dreams. When my cue comes, call me and I shall answer. My next is most fair appearance. Hi ho, Peter Quince, now the tinker, flute the bellows mender, Starling, 
God's my life stolen hence and left me asleep. I've had a most rare vision. I've had a dream. Past the wit of man to say what dream it was. Man is but an ass if he used to go about to expound this dream. Methought I was... I cannot say what. Methought I was, and methought I had... Man is but a patched fool if he were to offer to say what methought I had. Man's... The eye of man hath not heard, the ear of man hath not seen. Man's hand is unable to taste, his tongue to report, his tongue to conceive, nor his heart to report what my dream was. The hat stayed on. I don't care. Whoop Stop on. it. Oh, and that's a little bit. You are too officious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that really hurts. Hey, I'm so 
sorry. Uh, I didn't sorry. Yeah. You are too officious. If you're too officious. Let's go into your service. All of you are too officious. I definitely just got blessed. Oh, Let her alone. Speak not of Helena. Take not her part. For if thou didn't do you lost in ten. I'm God. Oh, I got those. Are these microphones? Do they go for a GTV?
Yeah, because if every, I'm thinking this through, if everybody brought their bags in here. Hello, this is this is this is the Shakespeare Festival brought to you by the Shakespeare Festival. <laughs> um English and Shakespeare Festival brought to you by Shakespeare Festival. Shakespeare Festival Hello. English, English, <laughs> English Chinese Shakespeare Festival brought to you by uh, Shakespeare Festival. Brought to you by Ian Coming at you live from Germany. Oh, hold up, hold up. <laughs> Coming at you live from Germany Studios. We have uh, George Russell down having Eugene six three five different masculine. Thank you. 
Yeah, yeah. Still yeah. rhyme with <laughs> But Matt said. Whoever's phone this is, that's mine. You better watch it. Someone's gonna break your earphones. Chill, bro, bro.
，你一线人。两杯水。
I think I've got enough. You guys put all your stuff back, right? Will, did you put the donkey head back? Um, yeah, no, no. A lot of people.
few, uh, just a, a word about props and costumes. Out there, I have kind of labeled different areas. So like there's an area where if you put on a dress, you put it back in that spot. Uh, togas, uh, wigs, hats, uh, the fairy type costumes. Like try to find where that goes. So then when you go out there and you're on deck, you can find that. If you need a dress, you can find that dress. I did pick up a few extra dresses and skirts and wigs uh, and togas and stuff yesterday. So there are a few more things back there. There are also name like kind of placards um, that you know, like we have right here um, that, that tell the audience who you are in, in the scene. Also, you should not have any props or costumes out in the audience. Those should be back there because everybody's kind of been rehearsing and practicing in their class with this stuff, assuming that it will be there. So if you have it out in the audience, obviously they're not gonna have it back there when they're trying to get ready. So, as soon as you're done, you put it back out there and nobody should have anything right now. So I'll, I'll just grab that, that placard from you on my way out. All right, so the first group up is Mr. Hastings' class, uh, uh, Act 1, Scene 1, uh, with Kavanaugh's group. They're ready to go. On deck is Nuremberger's group uh, from Act 1, Scene 1. Um, and then the group after that, just so you have a heads up, is going to be Miss Knapp's group first, even with Beck, Logan, Matt, Hang, and Ian, and Bintui. Uh, this first scene is Duke, Theseus, and Hippolyta discuss their upcoming wedding. Uh, Aegeus makes a formal complaint against his daughter, Hermia. Y'all ready? All right, Shakespeare Festival 2019, here we go. Yeah. Now, fair Hippolyta, our nuptial hour draws on apace. Four happy days brings in another moon. But oh, me thinks how this old moon wanes. Four days will quickly steep into night. Four nights will quickly pass away to time. And the moon, like a silver bow, new bent in heaven, shall behold the night of our similitudes. Stir up the Athenian youth to marry <laughs> Hippolyta, I wooed thee with my sword and won thy love by doing thee in. I will wed thee in another key, with pomp, with triumph, and with reveling. Happy be Theseus, our renowned duke. <laughs> Thanks, good Aegeus. What's the news with thee? Oh, that say she come out, with complaint against my child, my daughter Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius. My noble lord, this man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander. And my gracious duke, this man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. <laughs> Thou, thou, Lysander, thou hast given her rhymes and interchanged love tokens with my child. Thou hast by moonlight at her window sung with feigning voice verse of feigning love and stolen the impression of her fantasy. With bracelets of thy hair, rings, gods, conceits, knacks, trifles, nosegays, sweetmeats, messengers of prevailment in unhardened youth. With cunning hast thou filched my daughter's heart. And turned her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn harshness? I beg the ancient privilege of Athens. As she is mine, I may dispose of her, which either shall be to this gentleman or to her death, according to our law immediately provided in that case. What say you, Hermia? Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. In himself he is, but in this kind, one in your father's voice, the other must be held the worthier. I would my father, but look into my eyes. But rather must his, with your eyes must his judgment look. I entreat your grace that you pardon me. I know not by what power I made bold, nor how it may concern my modesty in such a presence in which I plead my thoughts. But I beseech your grace that I may know that the worst may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. To die the death or to abjure, forever the society of man. Now, fair Hermia, therefore, fair Hermia, question your desires. Whether to not yield your father's choices, to live a barren system, to live, to endure the life of a of a barren sister all your life. See. Hey, guys. Thank you. 
Lysander and Hermia have planned to elope. Ready? Go! Thrice blessed they that master so their blood to undergo such maiden pilgrimage. But earthlier happy is the rose distilled than that which withering on the virgin thorn grows, lives, and dies in single blessedness. So I will grow, so live, so die, my lord, ere I will my virgin patent up unto his lordship whose unwished yoke uh, uh, my soul which chooses not to give some. Take time to pause, and by the next new moon, the sealing day betwixt my love and me. For everlasting bond of fellowship. Upon that day, either prepare to die for disobedience to your father's will, or or else to wed Demetrius as he would, or on Diana's altar to protest for I austerity and single life. Let sweet mercy, and my sander yield, like praise sail to my serve right. You, you have your father's will. Let me hear from this. Do you marry me? Scorn for Lysander, true he hath my love. And what is mine, my love shall render him. And she is mine, and all my right of her I do estate unto Demetrius. I am, my lord, as well derived as he, as well as my love is more than his. My fortune in every way as fairly ranked, if not with advantage, as Demetrius. And which is more than all these most to be, I am the loved of beauteous Hermia. Demetrius, I'll about it to his head, made the love to Nadar's daughter, and won her soul, and she, sweet lady, dopes, devoutly dopes, dopes in my dust. <laughs> But Demetrius, come, and come, Aeneas, you shall go with me. I have some private schooling for you both. For you, fair Hermia, look you arm yourself. You fit your fancies to your father's will, or else the law of Athens will you on, which by no means we may expect it, to death or to a vow of single life. Demetrius and Aegeus, go along. I must employ in some business against our nuptial, and confer with you of something that nearly concerns you. With duty and desire, we follow you. Now, name the rest of the players. 
Francis Blue, the bellows mender. Here, Peter Quince. Uh, Luke, you're set down for this week. What is this, be a wandering knight? Uh, no. Is this the man that, oh, the, the man that Peter Miss Glow? The lady that Peter Miss Glow. The lady that Peter Miss Glow. Lady that Peter Miss Glow. <laughs> hey, hey, let not me play a woman. I have a beard coming. Uh, it's all one. You may play it in a mask, and you may speak as small as you will. And am I hide my face? Let me play Thisbe too. I'll speak in a monstrous little voice. Thisbe, Thisbe, ah, Pyramus, my lover dear, thy Thisbe dear, thy lady dear. And you shall play it too terribly. Well, proceed. Um, Robin Starling, the tailor. Here, Peter Quince. Uh, you should play Thisbe's mother. Tom Snout, the tinker. Here, Peter Coyne. <laughs> you hear Mrs. Father. Here, hear Mrs. Father. You hear Mrs. Father. Myself, Disney's father. Snug to join her, the lion. And I hope here's a place to do. Have you the lion's part written? I pray you, if it be, give it me, for I am slow of study. You can do it extent more, for it is nothing but roaring. Let me play the lion, too. I will roar that I will many man's heart get to hear me. I will roar that will make the duke say, let him roar again. Let him roar again! No. <laughs> <laughs> you are, you are set down for fear, miss. You should do it too terribly. You should do it too terribly, that you should fright the devils and the ladies that they would shriek, and that were enough to hang us all. That I would hang us every mother's son. Thank you, friends. If you, if you shall fight the ladies out of their wits, they would have no more discretion but to hang us. But I will aggravate my voice that I will roar as gently as a sucking dove. I will roar for any nightingale. You can play no part. You can play no part with Pyramus. For Pyramus is a sweet faced man, so you must play Pyramus. <laughs> She will pursue it with the soul of love. 
And here I take this charm from offer site, as I can take it with another herb. I'll make the render up for gauge to me. Let's see. Say not so. 
Um, <laughs> what, what though you love your Hermia, Lord, what though? Yet Hermia still loves you, then be content. Content with Hermia? I do repent. The tedious minutes I with her have spent. Not Hermia, but Helena I love. And as I look into your eyes and overlook love's stories written in love's richest book. Wherefore was I to this keen mockery born? When at your hands did I deserve this scorn? Is it not enough, not enough, young man, that I never did know nor never can deserve a sweet look from Demetrius' eye? But you must flout my insufficiency? Oh, that a lady of one man refused should of another therefore be abused. Help me, Lysander, help me. Pluck <laughs> <laughs> this, this crawling serpent from my dress. Yeah. Aim me for pity when a dream was here. Lysander, look how I do quake with fear. What removed? Lord, Lysander. Gone, no sound, no word. No, then I shall perceive you as not now, not, not nigh, either death or you, I shall find in you. See? Dear, 
but hard. <laughs> Boys, stay down but here a while, and by and by I will put thee up here. <laughs> a stranger pyramus that ever played here. Ooh, must I speak now? Ah, uh, Mary, must you. You must understand, he goes but to see a noise, and is to come again. <coughs> Most radiant pyramus, most lily white of you, of color like the red rose on triumphant briar, most brisky juvenile, and eek most lovely Jew. As true as true as horse that yet would never tire, I'll meet thee, pyramus, at Nini's tomb. Nini's tomb, man. Now you answer the pyramus. Why well, you must not speak that yet. You speak all your part at once, cues and all. Oh, Pyramus, enter. Your cue is past. It is never tired. <laughs> oh, as true as truest horse that yet would never tire. <laughs> <laughs> if I will bear, bear this beat, then I will only die. <laughs> oh, monstrous. Oh, strange. We are haunted. Pray, masters. Fly, masters. Help. I'll follow you, I'll lead you about around, through bush, through bog, through bear, through briar. Oh, 
Matan Wahan. What we have right now uh, is Puff tells Oberon about Tatania. Hermia wonders why Lysander disappeared while she slept and accuses Demetrius of murdering him. She must be off. Stand close. This is the same Athenian. This is the woman, but not this the man. But why rebuke you him who love you so? <laughs> if thou hast slain Lysander in his sleep, it cannot be but thou hast murdered him. So should a murderer look, so dead, so grim. So should the murderer look, and so should I, pierce through my heart with your stone cruelty. Yet you, the murderer, as bright, as clear, as yonder Venus in her domain sphere. What's this in my life, Sander? Where is he? <laughs> ah, but Demetrius, wilt thou give him me? I'd rather give his carcass to my house. Out, dog, out, cur, thou drivest me past the bounds of Venus' patience. Oh, my God. You spend your passion on a misprized mood. I'm not guilty of Lysander's blood. I pray thee, tell me then that he is well. And if I could, what shall I get there for? A privilege to never see you more, and from thy hated presence part of the there is no fallen or in her fierce vein. Here, therefore, for a while I will remain, which, in some slight measure, you will say. <laughs> what hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite, and laid the love to on some true love's sight. A dog is frigid, and the voice for force and sue. Some true love turned, and not a false turned true. Then fate overrules that one man holding troth, a million fail, confounding oath on oath. About the wood goes swifter than the wind, and Helen of Athens look thou find. By some reason see thou bring her here, all charm his eyes against she do appear. I go, I go, look how I go, swifter than arrow from the Tartar's cup. Flower of this purple dye, who with Cupid's archery, sink an apple of his eye. See. Oh. <laughs> Why seekest thou me? The hate I bear thee made me leave thee so. 
You speak not as you think. It cannot be.
When she's angry, she is keen and, oh, keen and shrewd. She was a fixer when she went to school. Though she may be small, she be fierce. <laughs> little again, nothing but low and little. Why will, why will you suffer her to love the dust? Let me come to her. Did you call you dwarf? You minimus of hindering not grass? You bee, you acorn? You are too efficient in her behalf that scorns your services. Take not her part. Sure. Let her alone. Speak not of Helena. Take not her part. For if thou dost intend, never so little show of love for her, thou shalt abide it. Now she holds me not. Now follow if thou darest to try who is right. Um, Follow? Nay, I'll go with thee. Cheek by jowl. You mistress, all this coil is long of you. Nay, go not back. I, tr I, know, I trust you not. Well, nor stand your cursed company. Your hands may be quicker though than mine for fray. My legs are longer though. To run away! <laughs> I am amazed, I know not what to say. <laughs> this is thy negligence, so thou mistakes. Committest thy neighbors woefully. Believe me, King of Shadows, I mistook. Did you not tell me I should know the man by the Athenian garb he had on? And so far blameless proves my enterprise that I am anointed in Athenian's eyes. <laughs> and so far glad it did so sort. And their jangling eyes do a seem a sport. Now if see these lovers seek a place to fight, high therefore, Robin, overcast the night. Lead these testy rivals so astray, that one not come within another's way. Like to Lysander, frame thy tongue, then stir Demetrius up with bitter rum. Then crush this herb into Lysander's eye, whose liquor hath this virtual proper tie. When they wakest, when they wakest from all this derision, shall see nothing but a dream and fruitless vision. And back to Athens, Athens, the lover shall wend, with league whose day till death shall never end. While I in this affair do thee employ, I'll to my queen and beg for her Indian boy, and I will charm her I release. From monster's view, all will be at peace. My lord of the fairies, this must be done apace, as night switch dragons cut the clouds full fast, and yonder brings on Aurora's harbinger. I with the morning's luck hath oft made sport, but now, but now, Follow my voice. We'll try no man but here. 
<laughs> Villain is much lighter heel than I. I followed fast, but faster he did follow. <laughs> that fallen am I in dark and even way. But here rest me. Come thou gentle day. For if but once I see thou great light, I will find Demetrius and avenge this spite. <laughs> oh, ho, Phyllis, why comest thou not? Thou runnest before me, shifting every place, and darest not stand nor look me in the face. Where art thou now? Come, I am here. Thou shalt buy this dear, if ever I thy face by daylight see. No, go thy way. Fainness constraineth me to measure out my length on this cold bed. But by day's approach, look to be visited. Oh, weary night. Oh, weary night. I may bet to Athens by daylight. From these that my poor company detest. And sleep, steal me a while from mine own company. But three. Come one more. Two of both kinds makes up four. Here she comes, cursed and sad, thus to make poor females mad. I can no further crawl, no further go. My legs keep no pace with my desires. Here will I rest me till the break of day. Heaven shield my sander if they need a prey. On the ground, sleepy sound, I'll apply. To your eye, gentle lover, remedy. When thou wakest, thou takest true delight in thy sight of thy former lady's eye. The man shall have his mare again, and all shall be well. Cheeks do coy, and stick musk roses in thy sleeps in his head, and kiss thy fair guard of tears in thy gentle joy. Where's the blossom? Ready. Scratch my head, the blossom. Where's monster cobbler? Ready. Monster cobbler, good monster, get your weapons in your hand, and kill me a red pimp humblebee on top of a thistle. And good monster, give me the honey bag. Do not fret yourself too much in the action, monster. And good monster, have care the honey bag break not. I would be loath to have you overflown with the honey bag, senor. Where's monster mustard seed? Ready? Give me your meat, monster mustard seed. Pray you leave your courtesy, good monster. What's your will? Nothing, good monster, but to help cavalry cobweb to scratch. He thinks I must to the barber. He thinks I'm a marvelous hairy about to the face. I am such a tender ass. If my hair do, must, do but tickle me, I must scratch. What? Wilt thou hear some music, my sweet love? I have a reason we'll get hear music. Let's have the tongue and bone. Or say, sweet love, wilt thou desire to hear? Oh, what thou desirest to eat? Truly a peck of provender. I could munch on your good dry oats. He thinks I have a great desire to a bottle of hay. Good head, sweet head, hath no fellow. I have a venturous fairy that shall seek the squirrel's hoard and fetch thee new nuts. I'd rather have a handful or two of dried peas, but I pray you, let none of your people stir me. I have an exposition of sleep come upon me. 
Sleep thou, and I will wind thee in my arms. The bears be gone, and be always away. So doth the woodbine, sweet honeysuckle gently and twist, the female ivy sewn rings on the barky fingers of the elm. Oh, how I love thee, how I do come. Welcome, good Robin. Cease thou the sweet sight. Her dotage now I do begin to pity. For meeting her late behind the wood, seeking sweet favors from this hateful fool, I did abrade her and fall out with her. When I had my pleasure taunted her, and she in mild terms begged my patience, I then did ask of her her changing child, which straight she gave me, and her fairy sent to bear to my bower of fairy. And now I have the boy. I will undo this hateful imperfection of her eyes. But first, uh, and, and just a buck, take this transformed scalp off the head of this Athenian flame, <coughs> that he, awaking when the other do, may all to Athens back again repair. And think not of this night's accident, but as a fierce vexation of the dreams. But first I will release the fairy queen. Be as thou was wont to be, be as thou was wont to see. Thine bud or cupid's flower hath such force and blessed power. Now, my Titania, wake you, my sweet queen. My Oberon, what visions have I seen? Methought I was enamored of an axe. There lies your love. How came these things to pass? Oh, how I loathe his visage now. Silence a while. Robin, take off his head. Titania, music calls, and strike more dead than common sleep of all these five descents. Music ho, music such as charmeth sleep. Now, when thou wakest with thine own fool's eyes, peep. Sound music. Come, my queen, take hands with me, and rock this night where on these sleepers be. Now thou and I are new in amity, and will tomorrow midnight solemnly dance in Duke Theseus' house triumphantly, and bless it to all fair prosperity. Fairy king, attend and mark. I do hear the morning lark. <laughs>
have now the four lovers leave the forest and Bottom wakes up. nor it's hard to report what my dream was. Let's see. Is he come home yet? He cannot be heard of. Out of doubt, he is transported. He come not to the place of art, which goes not forward. Stop this. It is not possible. You have not remained in all Athens able to discharge Pyramus for you. No, he hath simply the best with any handicapped man in Athens. Yeah, and the best person too. And he is a very paramour for a sweetheart. You must say paragon. A paramour is, God bless us, think of not. See, the Duke is coming from the temple, and there is two or three lords and ladies more merry. If our sport had gone forward, we had all been made men. Ah. Oh, sweet bully bottom, thus hath he lost six pence a day during his life. He could not have escaped six pence a day, and the Duke hath given him six pence a day for plain fairness. I'll be good, <laughs> he would have deserved it. Six pence a day in fairness or nothing. Where? Where? <laughs> Where are these lads? Where are these hearts? On this greatest day. Master, I am to this horse wonders, but ask me not what. For if I tell you, then I am no true Athenian. I will tell you everything. Right the cat. Let us hear, sweet bottom. Not a word of me. All that I will tell you is that the Duke had thine. Get your apparel together, new strings to your beards, new ribbons to your pumps, meet presently at the palace. Every man look over his part, for the short and the longest, our play is preferred. In any case, let this be have clean linen, and let not him who play the lion pare his nails, for they shall hang out of the lion's mouth. And most dear actors, eat no onions nor garlic, for we are to utter sweet breath, and I do not doubt but to hear them say that it is a sweet comedy. No more words, away, go away. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
high-minded men that work in Athens here, which never labored in their minds till now, and now have toiled their unbreathed memories with this same play against your nuptial. And we will hear it. No, my noble lord, it is not for you. It is nothing, nothing in the world, unless you can find sport in their intent, extremely stretched and conned with cruel pain to do you service. I will hear that play, for never anything can be amiss. With simpleness and duty tender it, go bring them in and take your places, ladies. So please, your grace, the prologue is addressed. Let him approach. The actors are at hand, and by their show, you shall know all that you are like to know. This fellow doth not stand upon points. He hath writ his prologue with a rough bolt. He knows not to stop. It is not enough to speak with the speech. Indeed, he hath played on his prologue like a child on the court. A sound, but not in government. His speech was like a, like a tangled chain. Nothing impaired, but all disordered. Who is next? This man is Pyramus, if you would know. This beauteous lady, Thisbe, is certain. This man with lime and rough cast doth present wall. <laughs> this grisly beast which lion height by its name. The trusty Thisbe, coming first by night, did affright. And as she fled, her mantle she did fall, which lion vile with bloody mouth did stain. And on comes Pyramus, sweet, youth and tall, and finds his trusty Thisbe's mantle slain. Where it was blade with bloody blameful blade, his dagger drew and died. I wonder if a lion do speak. No wonder, my lord, one lion may when many ask. In this same interlude, it doth befall that I, once now by name, present a wall, and such a wall as I would have you think that had in it a cranny hole or chink, through which the lovers Pyramus and Thisbe did whisper very secretly. This loam, this rough cast, and this stone doth show that I am that same wall, the truth is so. Would you desire a lime and hair to speak better? It is the woodest partition that I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, this course my life. You see. Wilt thou at Nitty's to meet me straight away? 
tide life, tide death, I come without delay. And thus have I, while my heart discharged so, am being done away from while God. <laughs> But stay, O spite, but mark poor night, what dreadful dole is here. Eyes do you see, how can it be? O dainty duck, O dear, thy mantle good, what's stained with blood, approach ye furies fell. O fates come, come, cut thread and throng, quail, crush, conclude, and quell. This passion is the death of a dear friend, and go near to make a man look sad. Be sure my heart, but I pity the mind. Oh, wherefore? 
nature didst thou lions frame, since lions vile hath here deflowered my dear, which is, no, no, which was the fairest dame that lived, that loved, that liked, that looked with cheer, the path of Pyramus. Aye, that left path where heart doth hop. <laughs> thus die I, thus, thus, thus. Now am I dead, now am I fled. My soul is in the sky. Tongue, loose thy light. Moon, take thy flight. Now die, 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 die. No die but an ace for him, for he is but one. Less than an ace, man, for he is dead. With, with the help of a surgeon, he might yet recover and prove an ass. How chance moonshine is gone before this becomes black and confined to a lover? She will find him by starlight. Here she comes, and her passion ends the play. <laughs> Okay. He thinks if you know the long one for such a fair Well, I hope she will be brief. The vote will turn the balance. Which pyramid, which Thisbe is the better? She for man, God warrant us. She for woman, God bless us. She has spied him already with those sweet eyes. And thus she means to the listen. Asleep, my love? <laughs>
If we shadows have offended, think but this, and all is mended. That you have but slumbered here, whilst these visions did appear. And this weak and idle theme, no more yielding but a dream. Gentles, do not reprehend. If we pardon, we will mend. And as I am an honest puck, if we have unearned luck, now to scrape the serpent's tongue, we will make amends ere long. For else the puck a liar call, so good night unto you all. Give me your hands if we be friends, and Robin shall restore amends. Well done. One last round of applause.